Saluton al ciui. Uh, hello, bonjour a tous. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this panel discussion where we'll be uh, discussing issues relating to uh, minority languages and language policies. Uh, do tiu ci programero estas organizata de Teo e kai uh, sponsorita de UEA do esperantai organizoi char ni esperantisto estas suffice sperta i pri lingvai aferoi mi dirus. Donc sans plus attendre, je vais vous présenter les quelques personnes qui vont participer à cette uh, discussion. Déjà, je vais vous présenter Cyprien qui nous vient du uh, Bénin. Euh, Michael qui nous vient d'Allemagne, ainsi que Nicolas qui est originaire de France mais a passé l'essentiel de sa vie euh, outre Québec, ainsi que moi-même Valentin qui serait en charge de euh, coordonner ce beau monde euh, ce soir ou ce matin, dépend selon euh, où vous êtes. So during this conversation, we'll be uh, jumping between four languages: Esperanto, English, French, and German. And without any further ado, I suggest we get down to the topic and uh, talk about minority languages. So that's something we hear about quite often in the language polyglot uh, community. Uh, but what is a minority language in the first place? I'm sure Mikael has a lot to answer to that question. Uh, off Deutsch vielleicht. Uh, das können wir machen. Uh, mein Kopf raucht jetzt schon von den, <lacht> von den vielen Sprachen, die wir hier benutzen werden. Um, aber ja, also Minderheitssprachen ist halt uh, ein Begriff, unter dem sich viele wahrscheinlich intuitiv etwas vorstellen können, um, der aber, wenn man genauer hinschaut, gar nicht so klar definiert ist. Um, es gibt zum Beispiel uh, in der Linguistik, und ich bin da auch kein Experte auf diesem speziellen Gebiet, aber ich studiere auch etwas, was mit Linguistik uh, zu tun hat, um, verschiedene Versuche, diesen Begriff zu fassen ähm, und zum Beispiel ein äh, Interlinguist, äh, Federico Gobbo, hat versucht, ähm, Minderheitssprache zu definieren als eine Sprache, die an eine bestimmte Ethnie äh, gebunden ist, die sich irgendwie durch einen bestimmten Ort äh, der Herkunft definiert, egal ob dieser jetzt ähm, äh, ein, ein wirklicher Ort der Herkunft ist oder halt ein, ein eher sozusagen mythischer Ort der Herkunft. Ähm, es gibt aber auch andere ähm, äh, Arten und Weisen, die Minderheitssprachen definiert werden, zum Beispiel auch von der Europäischen Charta für Minderheitssprachenrechte, wo es eben auch oft darum geht, dass eine Sprache äh, innerhalb eines Staates nicht offiziell ist äh, und trotzdem halt äh, gesprochen wird, aber und ähm, äh, eben im, im Vergleich zu einer dominanten Sprache steht. Und da gibt es aber oft eben diese Probleme. Zum Beispiel ist äh, Romanes äh, dann keine Minderheitssprache, weil sie nicht an einen bestimmten Ort gebunden ist, wie äh, manche Linguisten äh, das eben verlangen. Oder ist äh, Irisch keine Minderheitssprache, weil es ja offiziell ist in Irland, obwohl es natürlich offensichtlich eine Minderheitssprache gibt. Da gibt es viele Verwirrungen um diesen Begriff. Ähm, und daran knüpfen auch viele, ähm, viele Themen von, von Sprachenrechten an, äh, die wir hier auch diskutieren werden. Äh, ich will gar nicht so viel technischen Kram quatschen, deswegen würde ich das Wort direkt äh, weitergeben. Eble, ähm, Minestias Kiu, Volas, Aldoni, Ion, al, al Tiochi Temo. Yes, do, dankon pro la contribuo. Do, yes, effektive, pri Tio Temo, uh, minoritata e lingua, i facte, vi uh, supposas, che la situazio de la Franza lingua, exemple, en Canado, es a suffice interessa, ciu giesas minoritata en Canado, en Quebecio. Merci, Duncan. Do, yes, exactly, Kiel, uh, Michael, uh, Clarigis, la situatio aula. Tio que oni povas diri pri minoritata lingvo, ne ciam estas uh, facila, char uh, la franca compreneble estas uh, grava lingvo de la mondo, sed en Nord Amerigo, gi estas uh, quasau insulo uh, en uh, pli mal pli oceano de, uh, de angla parolantoi. Tiel que uh, oni ja povas uh, uh, paroli pri uh, Suffice grava lingvo monde, qui tamen estas minoritata do pli mal pli quinono quarono ene de Canado, ene de Canado, sed qui tamen havas ene de tio en la provinco quebequio, um, uh, do statuson de, uh, majoritata lingvo, au, uh, 
lingvo de la, de la play multo, kai uh, oficial a lingvo, kai uh, Ech ene de Quebecio está allí a ancora nivelo, es comprensible en Canadá, do oni palabras chefe, oni palabras diversas lenguas, estas indígenas lenguas, estas las dos oficiales lenguas de Canadá, la angla y la francesa, pri que hoy oni multe palabras de debate y social y política en Canadá y en Quebecio, que ene de Quebecio estas anca minoritata comunumo de angla parolantoi. Dotie estas la situacio estas foi mal facile prescribebla. Depende de la nivelo e qui oni regardas la situacion oni povus oni povas paroli pri minoritatoi au majoritatoi. Kelkai mi audis kelkai homoi prescribas la situacion en que en Canadá tras que yo y y el regarda sin que el minoritato y y un nivelo a alia que el que te o creas ni diru do bonan terreno por multa y multa y debate do mi doni salvi que el que en ocio en pri Pri kiel mi rigardas, kiel mi aliras la temon, kaj eble mi lasu al Ciprian paroli pri la situacio fia lande. En efet, oui, merci Nicolas. Donc, comme tu viens de le dire, la situation au Bénin est aussi intéressante, ou on va dire en Afrique francophone, pour voir de l'autre côté de la francophonie. Est-ce que Ciprian, tu peux nous parler un peu de la situation du français au Bénin et quelle la relation qu'il entretient avec les langues locales. Merci beaucoup, Valentin. Merci beaucoup, chers amis. Vraiment, ça fait un grand plaisir pour moi d'être parmi vous ce soir pour partager mes expériences en ce qui concerne les minorités linguistiques en Afrique, au Bénin et en général dans le monde. Euh, en ce qui concerne les langues qui sont parlées au Bénin, il y a plus de 13 langues qui sont parlées au Bénin. Il y a le français et puis les langues euh, de, telles que la Dja, le Fond, le Mina, ainsi de suite. Il y a plusieurs langues qui sont parlées au Bénin. Mais il est triste de constater que euh, nos langues euh, telles que nos langues locales euh, ne sont pas valorisées euh, comparativement à la langue française et aussi à la langue telle que l'anglais. Et cela fait beaucoup de dégâts, cela sème beaucoup de dégâts, puisque les gens, quand ils n'ont pas un bon niveau en, en français, ils n'ont pas la possibilité de travailler et, et ils ne sont pas aussi souvent considérés. Et si je prends ma petite communauté, la communauté des Adja, c'est une communauté qui n'est pas souvent considérée à cause du fait qu'ils ne sont pas trop éduqués ils ne sont pas euh, alphabétisés. Donc, il euh, y a plusieurs qui sont des analphabètes et quand tu viens quelque part et tu parles la dja, c'est comme si tu, on ne t'attend pas. On dit que les fonds au Bénin sont les grands, les fonds sont les gens qui détiennent peut-être euh, tout, euh, c'est eux qui gouvernent le Bénin et ainsi de suite, parce qu'il y a une majorité linguistique. Mais euh, au-delà de cela, je constatais que euh, cela n'est pas seulement au Bénin, c'est un peu partout dans le monde, même si vous rentrez dans d'autres communautés et vous êtes minoritairement, et vous êtes minoritaire, c'est-à-dire vous n'êtes pas beaucoup dans cette communauté, vous êtes toujours, euh, que dirais-je, vous êtes toujours, euh, les gens vous détestent d'une manière ou d'une autre, peut-être parce que vous n'arrivez pas à bien parler leur langue, peut-être vous n'arrivez pas à dire les mêmes choses, les mêmes tonalités que ces gens-là. Donc vraiment, le problème, les problèmes liés aux minorités linguistiques, on en a trop et on en souffre de ces problèmes. Et vraiment, euh, je n'aimerais pas monopoliser la parole et je souhaiterais qu'une autre personne puisse prendre la parole pour euh, en parler de ses expériences pratiques. Merci beaucoup. Et je, je suis la seconde personne. Et, et... Merci beaucoup, Cyprien. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting outlook on what, uh, how languages interact with each other in, uh, in Benin. Uh, so, Mikhail, I know you, you're pretty well informed about uh, minority. A Romanian. Language. Exactly. 
both in the north of Greece. You've already um, mentioned it a little bit, so maybe you can uh, go into length about it. What is the relationship of this minority with their own language? Because I know I, I know it's a bit actually a bit complicated. Uh, yeah, I won't uh, go in, in too much length about it, but uh, yeah, it's it's good that you that you mentioned it. So. Um, like this also relates back to to, to what uh, uh, Cyprien just said about you know uh, how uh, in certain in all in many regions in the, in the world like in this case that he mentioned you know it has directly to do with a, a post-colonialist um, uh, heritage that uh, the, the region is still um, dealing with, um, but also like in um, in other contexts there are often cases where like there is a sort of like privilege discrimination relationship. Uh, with regard to a minority language and this is like comes from my i guess my family's uh, <laughs> experience uh, so um, i have family in greece uh, in northern greece and my grandparents um, used to to talk uh, a language as their native one which is called aromanian or armeniasti in the language itself maybe some of you language enthusiasts might have might have gotten it has it's like a, it's a romance language from the balkans it's a bit related to romanian still not really mutually intelligible Anyway, long story short, the, the, <laughs> the basic problem is there that, uh, you know, Balkans are politically very, very, uh, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of crazy topics, there are a lot of taboos, a lot of historical barrage that's uh, always uh, kind of uh, influencing all kinds of discourse on, on topics where you, you would think it, it wouldn't matter. And the thing is that um, because historically uh, some Aromanians, uh, like long, long time ago, were like... Uh, I don't know, were funded by, by, by like, they, they were, had got Romanian schools funded by Romania back then, like in the beginning of the 20th century. And um, some of them uh, declared themselves to be Romanians rather than Greeks. And this is like, a, this topic is, is over now. Like, it's, it's not really an issue, you know, like there was the Cold War in between, like all these relations were cut. And now there are some language activists that just want to kind of make, so, do some activity to preserve that language because it's like, it's dying. You know, my uncle still speak it, my father doesn't speak it, I don't speak it anymore. And like, my generation is like, all like they, they don't really have a motive to learn it. There is no material, there's no resources, there's no funding. Um, and um, yeah, and like the, the sad thing is that even like those initiatives that started in the last years to kind of revive that language, like raise awareness, which is very important, I guess, also like in terms of these kind of linguistic uh, rights we are discussing about um, this evening, um, there immediately you will find uh, in the local newspapers like uh, headlines like uh, uh, dangerous games with Aromanian and like by some <laughs> right-wing paranoid, uh, uh, um, you know, people who say, yeah, it's, it's George Soros who's funding them and the Romanians want to take over Greece, which is utter bullshit. But like this is something, a situation that they have to deal with. And this is also why, exa for example, in Greece, the term minority language, which we might, as I described it in the beginning, understand as a technical term, is very, very loaded. Like it's immediately, are we not a minority? Because it immediately has like these ideological implications that if you're a minority, then you can't be truly part of the nation. And these narratives are something that I would like to see dismantled. So um, yes, I'm, I'm curious what uh, uh, um, Nicolas might have to, to add about uh, stuff like this from his experience. Alors, peut-être si je peux me permettre euh, un petit oui. peu de, de français <rire> de ma langue maternelle pour rebondir euh, euh, entre autres sur aussi ce que vient de dire euh, euh, Cyprien et puis euh, euh, qui va peut-être euh, aussi euh, ajouter un niveau de, de on va dire de, de, de réflexion à ce qui vient d'être dit. On a beaucoup parlé, et puis Michael vient de le faire aussi, de, de minorité. Mais avec l'intervention de, de, de Cyprien, euh, on voit aussi que les, les langues qui, qui sont à haut statut dans euh, différentes régions ou différents pays ne euh, sont pas toujours des langues qui sont les langues de la majorité, puisque ma compréhension est donc qu'au Bénin, euh, euh, finalement, euh, le français est en quelque sorte une langue minoritaire et les langues euh, euh, je veux dire nationales ou euh, autochtones du pays sont euh, chacune minoritaire, mais ensemble, on va dire, euh, majoritaire. Et c'est, euh, ça m'inspire deux choses. La première, c'est effectivement que... Euh, avec une même langue, là on parle du français, on parle de situations complètement différentes, on parle de, à un endroit d'une langue qui peut être majoritaire ou minoritaire à, di, à, à, divers, à divers niveaux, on parle d'une langue qui peut être au, au Bénin euh, minoritaire peut-être mais dominante, et euh, c'est d'ailleurs, on peut le dire jusqu'à un certain point, euh, le cas aussi... Euh, euh, 
au, au Québec ou euh, euh, pendant très longtemps et jusqu'à un certain point jusqu'à maintenant, euh, même à l'intérieur du Québec où il existe une majorité euh, de plusieurs millions de locuteurs francophones, la minorité euh, anglophone euh, historiquement euh, parce que évidemment le Canada a été euh, colonie britannique etc a eu euh, un pouvoir euh, considérable même sans être localement euh, euh, majoritaire bien sûr le continent nord-américain est majoritairement anglophone euh, ce qui aide euh, donc euh, on se retrouve avec euh, Ouais, un problème peut-être de, de définition où euh, quand on parle de minoritaire ou quand on parle de majoritaire, euh, peut-être qu'on devrait plutôt parler euh, de, même si le terme est peut-être trop chargé, euh, sinon de dominant et de dominé, peut-être de, de haut statut et de bas statut, euh, qui, qui est quelque chose qui est lié au nombre, mais qui n'est pas que le nombre. Alors voilà, c'est ce que euh, les deux interventions euh, m'inspirent pour l'instant. Ok, yes, no, dan con, uh, dan con Nicolas, c'est suffisant, grave, je pense, de distinguer entre l'effective la, la effective quanto de parolanto ou de danse et parolanto et de la lingua, qui ne ne prespegulas la social uh, status de tiuch lingua. Le fait est, si prien, mis ti volemas, pri via opinion relate à la uh, situation de Benino, qui elle vi pensas que on y qui est la ouvie aspectus idéal à lingvo politico, exemple, en Benino, qui est l'on y peut vous uh, valoriser la loca en lingvo, uh, chou la status de la France de vos estions moderigita, et une manière, qui on y pense à ce petit peu? Je pense que c'est une multitude d'affaires qui peuvent faire, donc la registre n'est pas encouragée, n'est pas encouragée, pardon, Uh, paroli locai lingvoin, char uh, etch en lerneo, eh, uh, tiu iq parolas uh, locai lingvoin, uh, estas uh, punitai, uh, pour la facto que il est volas que ni bonne regas la France, certe, yes, uh, il est pravas, uh, ni ne refusa, c'est uh, mi pensas que la, loca, la politique uh, devas uh, helpi al uh, ni loculoi, uh, lerni ni ai propai lingvoin, mi ne pova scribi mian lingvoin, mi ne pova scribi. Adjagbe, mi ne pova scribi adjagbe, ti o estas honton, kai et a boxo, do mi jus eclernis las fuye, do estas malbona, estas trista, ke mi ne pova scribi, kai et scribi, mi an propan livon, do estas tre complica, do niai, kiel diri, la politico i, de niai stato i, de vas kuradigi, lerni, kai, kiel diri, Uh, ancora merci matériel pour que multi le coup de pouvoir exprimer qu'à écrire facile pour parler lingue donc comme tio mi pouvoir al donner encore que et en Afrique en la toute Afrique ni devas encore chati quel dire ni devas encore ou ami ou la alien Par exemple, si vous venez en Angleterre, continent ou Angleterre, c'est un problème. Il y a des gens qui parlent en français. Et les gens qui parlent en français, qui sont en train de parler, ils ont des Donc, le problème n'est pas nous en Landa, mais le problème est en le continent. Et je comprends de la clarigoi de Michael kai de Nicola ke la situacio estas a tout monde kai ni devas provi trovi solvon por tiu situacio ncha kio estos la eston terso de niai fratoi kai infanoi dankon do yes tre tre bon apunto si prie en fait pri tiu ke la la problemo estas tre divers nivele se doni retrova zin en ciu landoi Kai fakte uh, Mikaelo chui povas vi fakte mensis ke la minoritata demando en Grekio estas aparte tikla kai uh, jaine la lokai minoritatai lingvo ne estas vere kuragigitai sa manier iom sa manier o la lokai lingvo de Benino chui povus eble uh, aldoni pri tiu la la situacio de minoritato en Grekio Mi pensas che giusto di avere più tutto il mondo, per chi ho parlato, per chi ho parlato, per chi ho parlato, per chi ho 
grava distingo anche che un eh, Nicola Menzies inter- che non è una domanda minoritata, maggioritata, se ci sono anche una eh, domanda di de, um, de pop strutture um, che ti eh, vede a molti livelli e in, in molti esempi che il, eh, il tio in Benino se comprenebile in tutto diverso contesto anche in Grecia quindi la specifica situazione in Grecia um, dove mi posso saldare che Comprenneble eh, se vi, eh, vi riguarda eh, la mappa di Grecia, che chi è trovato la minorità, la, o la, eh, chi è ottenuto eh, nomi nomi di minorità, è stata nel nord, chi eh, è anta o la Balcana e Milito, è eh, stata tre molto etna regione, eh, se comprenneble post la Limo, chi è stato um, Stigis, post la Balcana e Milito. Um, Subite vi avete un uh, parton de Norda Grecia, che è um, antaue vivi Sky, Slavofona, eh, Macedon eh, Lingvanoi, che è eh, Turk Lingvanoi, che è eh, Ech Ladino, do Jud Hispan Lingvanoi, che è Grec Lingvanoi, che è Aruman Lingvanoi, do multai anoi de diverse lingue. Um, che è comprensibile, ti ho anche orilata al tio generale. Um, Nozio della nazia stato, che è in un tia regione che esiste molto da nazia e malamichezzo, e anche chi è l'estra in Balcano, vedo, ben, Balcanio, vedo rinde. Um, tiu i demandoi per lingua e minorità, toi automate chargigia, spero io, plia, che io ne devo rilati al gica, che io, principio, ho diao in la, um, in la, ho diao a poco, che am tiu i, eh, conflitto e più mal più è stato parto, o devo essere parto della pazientezza, ancora eh, o casa, che però io anche ho questa grave domanda in Grecia, che in Grecia lo Stato non vuole agnoschi eh, lingua in minorità di Macedon lingua, non vuole agnoschi lingua in minorità di Aruman lingua, anche ho ecce di Turk lingua, cioè ci dice che ci agnosca che la religia in minorità, se non è che la lingua è questa, se, se vi riguarda la lingua in Balcana e Lando, la situazione è simile Crom la, la sufficiente buona esempio di Mazedo, Nord Macedonia, facte, che è la albana, che è la rumana, facte, è stata agnoscita, e che è la minorità di lingua, e che è ricevuta um, mono in subvenzione per aperi in televid programma, e per poco, e per organizzare i corsi. Lo tio è un buon esempio nella regione, che è generale, e i malamichezzo, e vedo rinde, è stata la più reganta um, factoro, e dire. Yes, to interesse, interesse. Uh, I think it's time to switch languages, actually. actually. Uh, so yeah, exactly. In the Balkan region, is famous for its uh, yes, complex ethnic and national situation. Uh, I could say that there are also a couple of countries, such as mine, France, where minorities, uh, minority languages, are not very uh, much given, uh, not given much attention or, or credit. Again, because of this idea of nation state. Uh, in France, which is uh, which has a pretty p- peculiar uh, approach to it, uh, it's a bit different from, I suppose, Western uh, most African countries because uh, the borders are mostly result of uh, fairly random uh, uh, borders, which has been uh, implemented by Europeans and not really uh, ma- match the, the national map of uh, minorities, ethnicities, or even languages. And coming back to Canada, uh, also has a... I'm actually curious to know, the language question issue tends to be mostly French versus English. I don't know if there's a much uh, space given to minority languages within Canada, actually. Well, that that has uh, yeah, that has a complex uh, answer. Uh, first of all, uh, let me. Uh, I was very interested uh, uh, by what Cyprien said uh, uh, in his, I think, uh, second, uh, you know, part of uh, uh, second part that that he talked about how uh, so within his own country uh, there's a lot of uh, of uh, minority languages and they're they're looked down uh, upon uh, by people who, uh, who who speak French or, you know, speakers of other languages. But if they go to, for instance, uh, a neighboring country that's English speaking, then uh, they could be uh, uh, so look, looked down upon or uh, sort of rejected as French speakers. So 
it's, it's, it's like yet another level of the language question that you're you're, you're not always representing uh, the language that uh, that, you, that you represent locally when you go abroad. It's uh, it's it's just uh, it's it, it's a very nice. Uh, well, not, I mean, it's a, it's a complex. It just highlights the way that the the, the question how the question is complex. Sorry. Just trying to get to my next idea. Yes, uh, you're correct that there actually are many language questions um, uh, in Canada. If you look at uh, if you look at the, the the whole population, it is true though that uh, the language debate has mostly mostly centered uh, around uh, French and English, and uh, so uh, there are other languages, obviously. The indigenous languages of Canada, some of which, uh, so um, a lot of which have relatively small populations, some of which are relatively uh, healthy in terms of, uh, of speakers and young speakers and transmission, uh, others which are unfortunately uh, not as well, uh, not as in, in, in as good a state uh, as they could be. There's also a lot of immigrant languages, um, although of course uh, this uh, sort of uh, tends to change with generations because uh, the uh, immigration waves are not, are not the same depending on the decade and uh, people do tend to uh, adopt the language of society uh, after a few generations but it is true that uh, here in Montreal uh, where I live uh, on the street you might hear uh, uh, French, English but also uh, uh, Arabic, uh, Spanish um, Haitian Creole and uh, many other languages. Uh, these are generally not the topic of language policy in Canada. Language policy in Canada, despite the fact that there is now some attention being devoted to indigenous languages, um, I'd say for us here in Quebec, it has mostly two levels, which I'll try to explain very easily. So at the Canada is a federation of 10 provinces, three territories, well, Quebec is the only one that has a French language majority at the level of the federal government. Both languages are official, but that means that the institutions of the Canadian government are bilingual. It doesn't mean that everybody speaks to both languages or it doesn't mean that on the ground both languages are, are used. Here in Quebec, we have uh, uh, another language policy which uh, has been uh, felt by some as being uh, contradictory, although I think it's uh, in reality, it's not uh, to the, the federal policy, which is uh, to have uh, French as the theoretically only official language, even though there are uh, also services uh, in English for the uh, uh, historical English speaking minority. And, uh, and the main uh, tenets of it is that uh, uh, schooling, except for these uh, uh, historical English speakers uh, is uh, uh, occurs or is, is done in French. So everybody goes to French school and the reason is and this has been the case for the past four decades and the reason for that is that uh, that way there will be a very high proportion of people who are able to speak French especially in the Montreal area where there's a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of immigrants and this uh, this is uh, what really, I think, uh, makes uh, language rights, if you will, uh, possible to uphold because you need to be able to speak the language, you need to be in an environment where the language is known and spoken to be able to, uh, to really exercise it. So I don't want to speak too much because I've already spoken a lot, but this is basically uh, at very, very, very high level what this uh, what it looks like. Okay, yeah, uh, good point, good point, thank you. Uh, actually, as you added a bit of complexity about the language situation in, in Canada, where there's actually more than just English and French, uh, as it's often uh, it's often uh, depicted. Um, so, coming up next. Well, I mean, um, yep. if, I, if, you, if you don't mind, I can, I can just... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, as we are already like approaching approaching the end of the uh, general discussion part, and then we'll uh, come to some questions that you guys had. Um, actually, I might I might do this in German. <laughs> um, also, ich denke, uh, bei all dem, was wir jetzt besprochen haben, eben mit diesen verschiedenen komplexen uh, Machtstrukturen und auch ökonomischen Zwängen, 
die ähm, in solchen Situationen, wo es eben halt äh, um sprachliche Privilegien geht, eine Rolle spielen. Ähm, es ist auch ganz gut, halt das, das größere Bild zu sehen. Also das große Bild ist halt, wir haben heutzutage ähm, schätzungsweise 7000 lebende Sprachen auf der Welt. Ähm, davon sind ähm, schätzungsweise 3000 ähm, vom Aussterben innerhalb äh, des nächsten halben Jahrhunderts bedroht. Also da das ist halt eine, ein, eine riesige äh, Zahl an sprachlicher Diversität, die droht verloren zu gehen, einfach weil eben die, die, die ökonomischen Zwänge in der heutigen Welt halt äh, vor allem eine Sprache zur, ähm, zur dominanten Sprache gemacht haben, die, die alle Zweige an Wirtschaft und Wissenschaft und ähm, kulturellem Austausch dominiert, die eben äh, international stattfinden. Und ich finde, das ist auch eine, ein Aspekt, den man nicht vernachlässigen sollte, auch wenn man sich zum Beispiel überlegt, auch rein rechnerisch, also ich meine, was was zum Beispiel äh, äh, Länder äh, es kostet, äh, quasi äh, Englischunterricht anzubieten, äh, um halt quasi international konkurrenzfähig zu bleiben, äh, während halt irgendwie dann, wie eben auch in der Situation in Berlin, wo es jetzt in dem speziellen Fall eher ums Französische geht, was da eben diese Machtstellung hat, äh, die die traditionsreichen, die traditionsreiche lokale Sprachvielfalt eben zugrunde geht. Und ich finde, dieses, dieses größere Bild und auch diese Verschränkung eben dieser sprachlichen Fragen mit, mit grundsätzlichen Fragen von Diskriminierung und äh, ökonomischer Ungleichheit ähm, ist auch immer äh, sehr gut zu sehen. Und ähm, genau, ich weiß nicht, ob da jemand vielleicht, äh, maybe someone wants to, to respond to that. And also, uh, I don't know, we haven't mentioned Esperanto, the other big elephant in the room here. Yet, so <laughs> maybe someone can do that. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, might be uh, something to add about, uh, especially Cyprien mentioned earlier that uh, this language uh, conflict uh, inequality is found everywhere in the world, but in different forms. So, as Esperanto speakers, we often come up with a ready cooked. Uh, Uh, already cooked uh, proposal to help and tackle the issue. Uh, so, yeah, how about on the, uh, how do you think, globally speaking, we could uh, enhance the position of minoritized languages? <laughs> um, minoritized languages, and it might actually be the time to, uh, tr to, uh, to go into the public's question, because this uh, question which just uh, jumped uh, to me on the screen uh, about the neutral language like Esperanto may have said that it can act as a good solution globally against discrimination, but do you think such a language could also act on a national scale, scale as such? So basically, could Esperanto be used uh, on a national level I say to even out the situation of the virus, local languages. Uh, Cyprien, uh, peut-être que tu auras quelque chose à ajouter là-dessus, en français, en anglais, en espéranto, au choix. Um, oui, je disais tantôt que uh, les problèmes linguistiques ne sont pas seulement dans nos pays et ne sont pas uh, seulement dans nos régions, mais ces problèmes-là sont des problèmes et qui sont un peu partout dans le monde. C'est le cas du Bénin et du Ghana que je faisais part euh, dans ma seconde euh, euh, comment, euh, euh, prise de parole. Et donc, euh, je disais tantôt que, bel et bien que j'ai fait un voyage du Bénin pour euh, le Ghana, les gens, quand tu parles l'anglais, ils ont dit, mais toi, tu es en français. Et mais pourquoi tu... tu ton, ton niveau, c'est très bas, euh, donc euh, ta tonalité, ce n'est pas celle voulue, donc euh, nous, on déteste le français, tu vois, c'est tr tr très difficile euh, d'avoir de, de, ce type de problème. Et je pense que l'espéranto, en tant qu'une langue qui est neutre, peut être une solution. Euh, l'espéranto doit être une solution. Euh, oui, ce n'est pas peut être une solution. L'espéranto, c'est la solution, je pense, parce que je ne pense pas qu'il y a autre solution pour pouvoir résoudre ces problèmes linguistiques et bien les bien et je pense aussi que euh, les langues telles que les, les, les langues de telles que les langues de signes c'est-à-dire les langues de signes peuvent aussi contribuer à cela 
Donc, c'est ce que moi, j'ai peut-être à ajouter par rapport à cela. Merci beaucoup, Valentin. Bien, 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 merci. Tu iu havasion pour Aldoni, pri la esperanto qui el solvo, ou eble qui el ne solvo, car ne ciui positive relatas al esperanto ou al ponto lingvo generale. Eble nur diru simple que quancam ni ne povas vere si tion qui o caso se stontetse ni ne povas simple decidi que esperanto ou alia lingvo estos la ponto lingvo almenau la facto que ni usas gin que esperantisto usas gin de prio el centiaro y prio el centri de chiaro y eso es pruvo que tío al menos eblas do por mí esto es simple esto es simple al menos que el diri esto es bildo de uno eblas solvo que el facto de poder ancao combini sin o combini gini diru con alia y solvo y que no nepre deba ser ti uno solvo al un problema que ni diris estis estas diversaj niveloj de problemoj rilate al lingvoj kaj eble ne ĉiuj postulas la samajn ilojn sed almenaŭ nia uzo montras ke jen unu el ili kaj ofte oni homoj kiuj ne konas bone konas esperanton aŭ la ideon de Ponto lingvo, construita lingvo, pensas que tio ne eblas, sed, yes, tio estas ilo kiu existas. Ok, ni montras tion, primal pli ciu tage. No, yes, efektive, estas esperantistas tranguloj kiuj paranas esperanton ciu tage organizas aferoj, kunsidas, protokolas, kaj tiel plu. Do, yes, almenau por tio la lingvo funcias kaj uzeblas. Uh, coming up in another question, the topic of sign languages was mentioned uh, recently by uh, Cyprien as well. And we do happen to have a question about this. What are the uh, what are your news views on the varying status of uh, sign languages, national, regional, indigenous in uh, in countries, in several countries? Uh, indeed, sign languages are often not thought about, uh, given much thought or credit when you think when you come to languages. We usually think of languages as spoken or written, but not necessarily signed. And indeed, there are no countries, to my knowledge, where any sign language is a minor is a minority language. But some countries do give a, a special national stat status to some of these languages. Does any one of you, uh, yes, Miguel, uh, knows uh, something about the, the topic? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I guess, again, this minority term is like a, a complex thing, but I guess de facto, like most of sign languages, sadly, are minority languages, um, which also kind of reinforces this uh, sort of discrimination against uh, people who are like due to their um, physiological means, like uh, necess necessitated to like... Uh, speak sign languages. So for my part, like my experiences, I, I did a, a course in German sign language uh, once, like um, at my university where it was uh, offered. And I found it very, very enriching and also very, very enlightening because there's like a lot of prejudice <laughs> also like before that on my part, like on, on how sign languages, like, I mean, that they actually constitute, you know, different linguistic systems. That it's not like you, you pick a spoken language and you start signing it. No, they are like natural and idiosyncratic and dialectal. Uh, has dialectal variety like any other uh, spoken language as well and yeah like this is also like an, a very important issue in the in the context of, of linguistic rights and i'm very glad this question came up because like my my stance on this would be like i, I don't understand why why doesn't every country simply uh, offer sign language courses like in elementary school like everyone would profit literally you know sign deaf people community they would profit because you know they they could like they would not be like these ostracized we all can only communicate with ourselves so like in written text uh, uh, type of community and like i mean everyone <laughs> would have like another means of of communication that's not like that's like based on the on the uh, visual <laughs> visual uh, um, and motoric type of uh, uh, um, like uh, articulators and uh, yeah, I mean, you would be bilingual, everyone would be bilingual, everyone would win. Why, why don't we do it? Like, people would feel included. What the hell? So that's, that's, my, that's my two cents on it. But 
I don't know what what others maybe others have a bit more in depth experience with sign languages than just me taking part in one course. So. Uh, yeah, well, that's a good uh, good output. I don't think that uh, Cyprien or Nicola have a specific experience on sign languages, to my knowledge. Uh, maybe you can nod or not to confirm what I said. No, not no. specifically. Uh, however, we do have another question that just uh, come, came up. Uh, and again, it's about the situation of Africa, but of English-speaking Africa. Do uh, estas en Esperanto? La demanda es iom longa, do mi legos gin. Mi spertis situacion en Tanzanio, kiun mi trovas malfacila. Tie la Swahila estas instruata en lerneoj kiel pontolingo kiu ebligas komunikadon sur nacia nivelo, nivelo kaj kun najbaraj landoj. Sed la anglan oni lernas malfrue kaj malbone, kaj tiel malebligas pli internacian orientiĝon por multaj studoj, akademiaj profesioj, kotopodo. Kion vi opinias? Uh, es interesa fakto pri la svahila, kiu estas, mi kredas, la plej disvastigita kaj valorigita, mi diru, denaska uh, Africa lingvo en de la angla y franz lingua y lando y do la svahila no ni de parola son orienta africo también uh, ministias chu iu elvi havas uh, opinión pritiu tiu facte du obla statuso que oni uh, valorigas uh, diru indigenan ponto lingua se tia diri uh, Kion, kion vi opinias? Do eble Cyprien havas uh, opinion pri tio? Mi ne scias ke ne estas lingvo ki la Swahila en Benino la ministio. Yes, uh, mi povas uh, diri pri la Swahila en uh, Do estas uh, tre bona projekto de la ŝtato, ĉar uh, e, multaj uh, uh, popoloj en tiu lando uh, havas eblekson labori en eh, ilia propra lando kaj uh, estas uh, multaj facileson por ili uh, lerni multegaj aferojn kaj uh, mi pensas ke tiu devas tiu devas esti la politikoj de multaj ŝtatoj kaj uh, la shva, la shvahila hodiaŭ estas uh, uh, bon popolita lingvon ke uh, multegaj homoj en la mondo volas lerni vidu eh, ezemple ke la shvahila lando ili eh, la shvahila lingvo Nestas divastigita, kai ili devas tion fari en la anglan. Vidu kio estos la problemo. Ni havos la saman problemon kiel en Benino, kie la Fransa estas kie, uh, kie la, la plej grava lingvo, kai multegai homoi ne povos et labori, ne povos et labori pro la facto ke ili ne si povas la Fransa, kai multegai homoi ne studis por si povi por paroli la Fransa. Do Mi pensas que tio estas normala afero kaj uh, oni devas kuraĝigi aliaj ŝtatoj fari la saman. Dankon. Yes, ja, uh, dankon, dankon. Uh, bone, ni havas ankoraŭ iomete da tempo, do estas ankaŭ alia, alia demando kiu ne avenis antaŭe, kiu ne plene trastis ĝis nun. Uh, so the question, could you address male privilege in language learning and how folks uh, not identifying as male are disproportionately affected in the language community. Um, I'm not sure I understand the last bit of the question uh, about uh, yeah, but I know anyway that uh, Mikael has a has a couple of things to say about this. Go ahead. Um, yes, thanks uh, very much for this question. Uh, I mean, as you can see, like um, even though we. Um, as a stadio, like we represent the worldwide Esperanto youth, and even though we um, uh, succeeded to some extent to capture like uh, the geographic variety of uh, of our members, um, for this specific instance uh, of this discussion, unfortunately, <laughs> we have uh, four cis <laughs> cis male identifying uh, folks uh, sitting here and talking about uh, uh, issues related to um, privilege and discrimination. You know, there is there is a certain irony in this. So obviously, you know. Uh, we are aware of this, but unfortunately, uh, in the spontaneous uh, organization of this uh, discussion here, um, uh, there were like uh, a, a few like um, shortcomings in uh, uh, getting other people uh, from from different like uh, gender identities or like to uh, also represent us here. Uh, but it addresses an important question because um, I don't know um, exactly uh, in, in 
language community, I guess, is, is, is a broad term. So um, I guess I, could, I would understand the question like this. Um, also, with respect to language learning, that maybe in the general like language enthusiast polyglot community, um, like I personally am more active in the Esperanto community, but we, I guess it's kind of a, a copy paste thing from there. And there you can also see like there is a, um, a slight general imbalance, which is um, very sad and something that, that should definitely uh, be overcome. Um, I can relate this also to um, maybe more specific um, questions that uh, are related to the situation of Aromanian in Greece, where um, you can clearly see that um, it's, it's a very <laughs> patriarchal uh, society, a very sexist society, and it was even, even more like back in the day, where, for example, also this issue of, uh, you know, like people being discriminated because of their linguistic identity was also something that was like disproportionately affecting um, uh, people who were like uh, typically read as, as, as female. Um, this being that, for example, like in the traditional uh, lifestyle in the in the villages where the Romanians lived, um, it was typically the men or like the male identifying people who were um, the ones that were bilingual because they had, you know, they they were the ones that were uh, doing business and stuff, and they had like the minority language as the home language, whereas they had the um, uh, the prestigious language, which in this case would be Greek, the majority language, to interact with, uh, you know, like the, the 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 majority language community and like the um, economic world, whereas um, in that sense, like uh, women uh, from from that community were double uh, discriminated in the sense that they only because they were like forced to do these sexist structures to like stay at home and and do the do the work there, uh, the um, care work, etc. To um, to like stay monolingual in the minority language and have like, have, like even less uh, independence and uh, access to to um, uh, other uh, resources. So that's a, like an important question that often like falls um, under the table. And that's why I'm, I'm glad that this question came up like that. You know, all these kind of discriminatory structures, be they related to language, be they related to, to race, to gender, like they all kind of intersect with each other. And I think it's important to, to address that. And um, speaking like for on, again, like on, on behalf of Tejo here, like um, even though like for this specific discussion, we didn't, um, and we unfortunately didn't succeed to like have like a more uh, um, diverse, um, panel here um we can we can hint you to the fact that like in, in Tejo we have uh, different commissions also dealing with issues like um discussing feminism and uh, gender equality issues and you can always check our youtube channel out and um uh yeah it's 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 good content and uh, we also try to address uh, these issues here um like not here but uh, in in Tejo in general in our activities for esperanto and language uh, equality and diversity in general so that would be my part on this yeah, all right. Thanks. Uh, excellent points so for non Esperanto speakers. Uh, indeed, li uh, like gender issues are also something that are very much uh, dealt uh, with in the, within the Esperanto community, especially with Teo. So if you check out on YouTube, I think it's Teo Esperanto, T-I-J-O. And there has been a couple of uh, talks like the one we're doing right now, but uh, about women's rights. So that's uh, if you want to check out and hear a bit like how Esperanto sounds. Bonne, do mi lau mia controllo ne estas plia chu no uno mi repeto chu iu el ni ai kun palenanoi kun babilantanoi. Babilanto uh, havas lastan commenton por uh, aldoni al temo, chu la temo de Micaelo, o la, la lasta demando, o generale la, la temo de la debato. Anca me estas yes. multo por diri, mi pensas que ni diris uh, la esenza in afero en por la, la nuna periodo, la just pasinta oro. Do, mi ni vere dancas al chiui, que hoy parto prenis que espectis, que por mi, mi pensas que enordas. Okay, so thank you everyone for uh, all the, uh, the all the members of the audience who uh, bared with us for almost an hour. Danko nan chiu ya parto prenantoi panelanoi mitrovis la la no la vorton. Merci a toutes et à tous d'avoir de nous avoir regardé. Et j'espère que cette discussion vous aura inspiré vous aura inspiré tout simplement. Et euh, je ne vous reste plus qu'à vous souhaiter une bonne euh, fin de journée, de soirée, selon l'endroit où vous êtes dans le monde. Uh, thank you everyone, and I think we can uh, call it today. 
Jis. Merci beaucoup, Valentin. Pour bien vous nous regarder. Merci. 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 Merci.